join me uh, for an hour. Epic a brew day. Six hours worth. Yeah. I'm tired. I'll guide you through um, my stone and wood style um, full grain recipe brew day. And uh, yeah, like and subscribe. All right, brew day is upon us. Late start for me. Very late start. Anyway, so I've set up my carbon filter. 37.7 litres I need. Um, it should be oh, just about there. Okay, so the water's at level, which is just under the 38 mark. The groundwater temperature was about 11 degrees. It's really cold this morning. I've set up the spar jar so it'll recycle the water. Just making sure that they're all nice and firmly on these clamps. Um, I'll turn my ball valve on. That'll start the water to flow. And you can see there, it wasn't that tight on that one. So I might just fix that one before I start. But what I'd usually do then is turn on the pump and that would start the flow. But I've got some shock and lakes there, so I'm just gonna fix those before I do that. I'll turn this arm off. That's it, I had a big leak. I'll turn the pump off for a second. So, um, yeah, the leak was coming from here. This clamp wasn't done up properly enough. And these couple of these screws down here were a bit, um, a bit loose, so I've done those up, but that's where I thought the leak was coming from. Um, there's a tiny little leak here too, but... Um, yeah, so that's all ready to go. So what I'll probably do now is just turn on the pump. Oh, the ball valve is open, so I'll turn on the pump now. And that will recirc the water. So I'm getting the cold water from the bottom and putting it to the top. So that should warm up a lot quicker than if I just left it. One thing I forgot to do is drop a Camden tablet in just to get rid of that smell. Okay, so that's one Camden tablet I'm actually going to chuck in too. Get that there. So that'll fall through nicely. Oh, I'll turn the ball valve off, turn the pump off, take that arm off, uh, put the bag in, um, and then secure it with um, these hockey straps just around the side. They're just easier to release later um, uh, when I get in a big rush uh, trying to get the grains out and squeeze them. Okay, that's all in there now. <clears throat> so what I've done. Now this is where there's probably a couple of design flaws. See, that's where my sight glass is and I've got a stainless steel sort of eyeball there, uh, which sort of keeps it close to the uh, to the, uh, the actual unit. Um, I'm still getting a bit of leaking through there, but it's not much. Um, anyway, so what happens is when I run the Oka strap underneath, underneath the frame and to the other side, it keeps it doesn't pull the bag all the way up. It sort of sits on there. It puts a bit of pressure on there, but it's not too bad. Um, and when the grains are in there, it'll weigh it down anyway. So I've done the same on the other quadrant, so to speak. Um, and that keeps it all nice and tidy. So, uh, so when I do drop the grains in, the bag's not gonna fall in as well. Okay, so reach temperature. Um, I've got a helper now, which is fantastic, and some tripods. So, what my helper's going to do is start pouring the grains in. Now, I'll explain what's what's going in. So, we've got four kilograms of pale malt, two row. We've got some wheat malt, 1.2 kilograms. We've got 300 grams of flaked wheat and 200 grams of Munich malt. So this is going to go in now. I'm going to turn the ball valve down a bit and my helper's going to put some oats in for me and I'll start stirring. Brewing. Yeah, yeah, just put it straight in. Yep. And I'll just make sure that's, that's all spread out. Keep going. All of it. Yeah. So he'll start pouring in the grains now and from the grain bag, just nice and slow so I can start stirring it. 
Um, I'm just going to shift that out of the way a little bit. Just hold it up. So Thank you. That's it. Nice, steady. Nice, steady pull. So just trying to make sure that all the water contacts all the grain and it doesn't um, form big dough balls. Um, and see how the temperature will drop. You go, pour it in more if you keep going. Yep. If you hold the corner up the top there, mate, that's okay, that's good. So, yep, so I'm just basically pushing, pulling it up from the bottom. Yep, good pull. Just pull the bag up a bit more. Yep. There we go. Alright, we'll get that out of the way. So you can see the temperature's dropped now in the water. Not heaps, but enough. So what I might do, I'm just going to set this so it sits at 67.7. I'm going to hold the button down. Set again. That'll make sure the heat is off. I'll start that sparge again. So, so that's um, getting the water from the bottom and bringing it to the top. And then coming through the bottom again. So, ultimately, what I can do is I can put the lid on it. Uh, and a removal blanket like this, pretty much, and that'll keep all the heat in. Nice, expensive Bunnings removal blanket. So what I might do is I'll actually unplug the heater, the element from the temperature controller, and just let it sit, because that's actually sitting quite well at that temperature. Needs to drop a bit, so I'm not don't want the element to go back on. Anyway, so that's it for about an hour. I'm gonna occasionally um, take it off and stir it, probably every 10 minutes. Um, but I'll start my timer on my uh, handy dandy notebook. Okay, so I'm just gonna run my timer now on Beersmith. There we go. So that will tell me when the mash is complete and all the extra steps. It'll make lots of noise. Uh, I might show you some intermittent stirring bits. so it's not as aggressive, so it's got time to fly down the bottom. Just um, pop that off there a little bit, just so it doesn't go anywhere. So yeah, I'll leave the lid off and um, see what happens. So I just got to monitor it really. Um, you got time to clean your fermenter. Um, this has already been cleaned, um, so I want to sanitise it now. So what I've got in here is I've got my airlock, my taps, um, and everything related to this. After the boil, everything will have to be sanitised. So what I do is I end up getting just a blank bun for the tap area. I drop all my sanitizer in, along with the rubber seal for the top, and the rubber seal for the airlock area. I'll use my special bung inserting tool. Um, to do that. Now, my hands aren't sanitized, the tool isn't sanitized. Um, I'm just gonna do this anyway. I'm just gonna do under the lid, because that probably won't reach, or the water won't reach there when I shake it about. Okay, so, 
from now on, I want to get this away from the so-called inside elements and any risk of getting any germs. So, I'm going to give that a good shake. Make sure you get all that foam forming. I'm not going to be leaking out because that rubber seal's not there anymore. And that's pretty much it. You want to leave that for, you know, 10 minutes or whatever. Uh, just to kill everything off. After 10 minutes, what I would do is making sure that you're still trying to stay pretty tidy and clean to like form it, foam it, that's formed, I should say. So what I'll do is I'll tip a lot of that back into this jug. You watch me make an absolute dog's breakfast of this and mess. It'll probably go everywhere, but I'll just get the I'll just get everything out, apart from the uh, rubber seal, and I'll put that in the lid. Um, I'll put that in the lid, just set that in there, get your rubber grommet there for your airlock, get that in. Um, I'll spray it from the other side, so it should be okay, but I'll give it another spray. Um, make sure that that's all seated correctly. There's a bucket load of foam um, um, in there. We'll get most of it out later on. Um, I've still got heaps on my heaps of sanitizer on my, uh, on my hands. What I will do is I'll get some, I'll get the bung out now and put the tap in. Drop stopper. Basically there's a little slit on the top of there, goes towards the top of the tap. So when it's inside and all that trub starts to form and you do your cold crash and whatnot, all the trub sort of sits under there and you still get a decent amount of beer through here without all the crap. So anyway, that's right to go in. I'll just give that a quick swish. That's right to go in there. He says, that's no, pretty tight. That shouldn't leak, that should be fine. So yeah, that's ready to go, ready to go. Um, and clean and sanitized. So I might just put my um, airlock in the top of there, just so that no, the, no greedies get in there while I'm doing other stuff. So now I'm gonna just prep my hops for the, um, for the additions through the boil. So my recipe calls for Galaxy. Um, we want for five minute addition, um, 17 grams of Galaxy. So, we'll get that one ready. Oh, smells fantastic. One of the best hops. Okay, so this gives it a bit of bitterness, but mostly it's going to be flavour. So, 7 10 on the knocker. So, that's my first hop addition. And then my flame out addition is um, quite a bit of galaxy. It's uh, 30 grams. So, I'll put the first addition in the bag. The second addition, I'll put in the bag as well. Um, the bag here. Just some marbles, just to wipe down. Um, and yeah, it's just, um, that'll let all the wort go through and get to all of the, um, get to all the hops. Um, I hope to get all that flavor out. Okay, so I'm going quite well. I've got about 3 minutes 40 left to go. This is the section <laughs> that I find really, really stressful. Um, it's really gonna be untethering the bag getting it on the bag, tabs on here, getting it up uh, high enough so I can squeeze the rest of the juice out. Um, but I've also, once I've done that, I have to get the uh, false bottom out because it interferes with the whirlpooling. In about two minutes, the alarm's gonna go off. Um, I'm gonna get this off here, uh, squeeze the bag, and yeah, we'll, uh, I'll show you what happens. All right, cool.
uh, sorry, turn off the ball valve, turn off the pump, um, and just turn off everything at the moment. Um, this is going to be bloody hot, um, so I do have to untether this. I've got my bucket underneath, and I'll swap it over to the Whirlpool arm, but I'll do that after I've gotten the bag out. So I'm just going to grab a rag just to, to handle this, um, and I'm just going to start undoing this and collecting what happens with the wort at the end. Um, we'll go back in anyway. So it's just going to be careful when you pull the bag up that you're not hitting that barb. So what I'll do is I'll probably pull the bag away from that front of the, um, of the kettle so it doesn't grab. So what will happen now is I'll just gently pull it away from that wall. Um, it's not too hot actually where I'm grabbing. So I'll use my ratchet. You can hear that draining. I hear that draining now. I'm just going to reset my arm up here so it's over the middle a bit more. Okay. So I'm just going to sit that there for a second and then basically I'm going to use my hands to squeeze out a lot of the wort. Um, and then I'll grab an old, I'll just put this here, so I'll grab an old um, kitchen, sorry, an old uh, fridge shelf that I'll put over the top and I'll push down on. So I'll go and grab that uh, and get it ready and then I'll show you what I do. Right, it's as simple as that. I'm just going to rest this down here um, just so it's easy to get to and then squeeze the bag from the top here. You can hear some of that lovely work coming out. We've got the bag away from the side, so but if I am squeezing it, the um, the work's not going down the side and coming out the side of the, of the kettle. So that's pretty safe as it is. So I can start bringing it up. You can see there. It's only a small amount of grain, but it has sort of a little bit. Um, but um, I'll just do that usually and squeeze it and get as much out as I think it's going to come out. So what I might do now is I'll drop the shelf in, like there's no real exact time to it. Um, oops, it's about there. I'll just release the uh, the ratchet down and then just rest the bag there. There's a bit of slack on that and it's taken all that pressure off your hands. So if you can try and keep it to that smaller bag amount, usually what will go around the outside and drip from the middle so it won't go down the sides. Um, but you end up with a bit more control and you can get the bag a bit tighter. And get the water out. Okay, so what I can do now, I can lift this up. In fact, I'll do that. I just put it over the top of this um, pot I've got. Just for the moment. I'll do the same again. I'm just going to rest it there, release the ratchet, and just let it sit in there for a sec. Just so it's a bit out of the way. Okay. I can pick that off now. I don't need that. I'll wash that up later. Um, now, I've mentioned before I've got to get the false bottom out. Now, the element goes this way and there's feet either side. So pretty much I've got to go in this way and lift it up and pull it out. If I go the other way, I'm going to catch one of the legs on there. I'll be here forever. So, no, nah, I'm not going to reach it with that. So what I'm going to do, <laughs> up with a handful of hot work, that would be really pleasant. I'm just going to use the end of my nice spoon there just to get underneath it. And hopefully this will be really easy. Of course it won't be. Because filming, oh no, it's not too bad. Not too bad. So that's my false bottom. It's pretty warm. Still got my gloves on, obviously. No dernies. What I'll do now is 
take these ridiculous things off. Put my Whirlpool arm on. Okay, um, so I'm going to put that on this side of where the um, temperature bar is. So when it pushes the water out, it's not going to push this way. Okay, so I'll turn my element on now. I'm not going to run my element through this. I'm just going to use that as a temperature guide. I'm going to run the elements off my main elements on and off. Because I've got to get to a boil. And pretty much this element will just sit at that boil. This 2200 watt element will just sit at that boil fine. Um, and it's not going to over get any hotter than that. You can hear that starting up now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to prime the pump. You can hear that starting now. Um, so the water's come out into the uh, into the pump area, or the wort, I should say. I'm going to turn the pump on. So that's doing its thing, which is really good. Um, probably don't need to worry about that now. I think I could just rest that there, and it's well pulling nicely. Um, I could put a lid on it if I wanted to. It doesn't really have to have a lid on it. Um, probably get less evaporation if I do. Um, one thing though I will do is I'll take a quick pre-boil gravity reading and I'll just put that over here in a cold glass. And then when post-boil I'll take another gravity reading. So once it starts to boil I've got to start my timer off again like a boil timer. Um, I don't have any additions till quite late. It's getting hotter now, the whirlpool's going, um, the temperature gauge is in there, it's doing what it's supposed to um, I'll bring the camera over and I'll show you. Alright. Whirlpool's happening really nicely. So, <clears throat> I don't really need to whirlpool yet, um, but what this is doing is pretty much just pulling that cold water from the bottom and obviously dispersing it around the side and hopefully getting it to temperature a lot quicker. It's a nice colour, it smells great. Um, I'll let you know what the, um, the pre-ball gravity was a bit later. But yeah, that's sort of how it works. Right, it's getting um, pretty close to the boil now. It's about 94, 95 degrees. So that lovely, lovely protein sitting at the top there. I measured my post mash gravity and I've missed my target probably about um, quite a lot like that 12 points so I should be I should have been hitting around about 1047 and I hit 1035 and uh, I just took that gravity uh, reading then um, just before the boil and we're sitting at about 1037 so my mash, my mash efficiency is a bit low it's supposed to be around about 6 and 6.3 6.5 this recipe um, if I want to get it up there, I could always add some um, light dry malt um, towards the end of the boil um, or some dextrose uh, in the fermenter like a kilo or something. What I will have to do though is I'll drop um, this bag in probably around about 20 minutes to go just to make sure it's nice and sanitised. Um, you can sanitise it in the boil, you don't necessarily have to sanitise it um, with your atomic sanitizer. Uh, but I'll drop my 17 grams of galaxy in it five minutes to go and then it flame out um, pretty much just after I've um, started my immersion chiller running as I cools down to around about 80 degrees I'll add my 30 grams of um, uh, galaxy and that'll steep for quite a while I'll probably let that steep and whirlpool so we'll get down to probably about 20 degrees and I'll just let it whirlpool for maybe uh, you know maybe an hour just to make sure the crap sits in the middle and gives it a good chance to um, to steep a bit um, at those high temperatures. So it'll drop down fairly quickly between about 15 16 minutes. It's about 98 degrees now. I'm gonna hit the ball very soon. Yeah I might uh, I might just start the timer now and get it going. The other solution too is I can let it boil for a bit longer, like my uh, my estimated pre-boil volume is supposed to be a bit lower, so I could probably let it boil for another half an hour, or get some more evaporation, get more of the water out, and offset my hop addition for another half an hour after. It's boiling away nicely, um, I'll take another reading 
Um, probably, oh, probably 45 minutes into this, just before I put the bag in uh, to um, sanitise and see how we're traveling. Traveling. Um, if we're getting around about the 1042 or 45 mark, I won't be disappointed. It's, it's going to be fine. So, so I reset the timer for another half an hour. So I'm just about to come up to um, my first edition hops. Uh, I'm still going to check the gravity though because it's still really low. It's only um, still just under 1040. So what I'll probably end up doing is adding um, just some light dry knives and some dextrose. So a bit half and half, a bit half and half. Um, uh, you know, 500 of light malt and um, light dry malt and half of um, another half of dextrose, just to give it a bit more of a push. Um, but I think I'll do that. I'll stick it in the fermenter and let the yeast chew it all up and um, I'll probably get a bit of the wort, a little hot wort um, and I'll put it in and just dissolve it um, before I put it in the, um, the fermenter to so I um, can get a proper reading, grab it reading. chiller and chuck it in there. I won't hook it up yet, won't need to, um, to the taps. And that'll just boil all those greeblies off. Um, and that's whirlpool motion is still happening around the outside. So it'll push the water through that bag and get to all of the hops and uh, embrace its goodness. There you go. So that's my 17 grams. I'm going to put it in my bag. There we go. So it drops in there. Nice and easy. Don't use two, stay there. Right. So, let that drop in. Oh man, that smells good. Okay, so that'll drop in there now and go for five minutes and then I'll start the immersion chiller water going through. Uh, get it down to about 80 degrees and I'll add that, which should be nice. Okay, so that's the alarm now for immersion chiller. So I'm just going to run that now, run outside, turn that on. So obviously we've got a flame out now, so we're going to turn the element off so there's no more boiling. Um, that's it. I'm going to wait until it gets down to, it's sitting at 94 degrees now, I'm going to wait until it gets down to around about 80. And I'll add those. In fact, it's coming in so quickly, I might just add them. In fact, I will. I'll add them right now. Um, <clears throat> so that's the 30 grams of hops of the Galaxy. Yeah, it's dropped at 89 now. So I'm just going to let that sit there in Whirlpool until it cools down um, for 20. Um, I might grab just a couple of litres that worked. Um, not sure how to do that yet. Uh, I might close the ball valve and um, just take the end off the pump and uh, just grab a litre or something just to mix in the bottom of the fermenter. Um, just to uh, the uh, to dissolve the 50-50 uh, mix that I was doing. So now I'm adding my 50-50 white malt and dextrose just to bump it off a bit. Bump up the ABV a bit. Um, drop that in there like that, just to give it a head start to dissolve, um, so I can get a proper reading when all the rest of it's mixed in. Granted, it's not going to be as clean as the stuff that's going to come out of there, but hey, we'll start anyway. So what I'm going to do is, um, that's all sanitised, I'm just going to give it spray. Just melt that, dissolve that. That's all nice and dissolved. Whether you can see that, there's a couple of bits of malt. Light dry malts are sitting there, but uh, that'll dissolve, I'll dissolve over time. Um, and you can see the trub, trub stopper in there. 
as well. Just because I'm being paranoid. And put that on there. Put it on there, ready to go. I don't know whether you can see that there, but it's dropped to 40 degrees already. So that's very efficient. When this is down to 20, I'll uh, take the immersion chiller out. I might just let it sit and whirlpool for half an hour or so. Um, just so it's got a chance for all the truck to just form in the middle. All the crap, all of the proteins and whatnot to drop in the middle. Tiny bits of hops and whatnot. And also give it a chance to steep a bit more in just a cooler temperature and try and get as much flavour out of the Galaxy hops as I can. You know, within six minutes, it's dropped to 35, so I'm really happy with this immersion chiller. Um, it, again, it wasn't my idea, but um, I've read about it. I'll talk about that later. I can do a video on that if you want, um, just about efficiencies and whatnot. But yeah, it's great. It's really, really good. Um, makes you cool down at water nice and quickly um, and then able to use your hops um, in those late flame out additions properly without them, you know, getting all bitter. Righto, so we're down to the 19 and a half degrees now, so I'm just going to unhook all of this, um, take the pressure side, well I'm just going to leave it and stuff it without risk of getting any water in there, I'm going to take this out. So what I'm probably going to do, so I'll let that whirlpool now, that's a great temperature, that's perfectly pitchable. What I want to do is just let the whirlpool gather all of those heavier items and take them to the middle. Um, then I'll unhook this uh, this line here and uh, take the uh, sanitised um, silicon tube that I've got over there and run it into the fermenter. Turn off the pump first. Turn off the ball valve. Okay. This is where it gets gonna get messy. Um, right, let's get this clamp off here. We'll go over there. Right, so I'll get a bit of back wash from this when I undo it. It's blood everywhere. I'll put that back in. Right, so this. was my sanitised pipe, my silicon pipe. Um, this is my aerator, I'll show you that later, to put some oxygen in the, in the word. Right, here we go. So, I'll undo that. Oh man, it smells so good. Um, yeah, bugger it, I'll drop it in there. Then on the end of that. Put that in. There. Okay, that's pretty much it really. Um, I'm just gonna grab that, spray that, and fill up that. Right, open up the ball valve, okay, and start the pump. There we go. The original gravity. <clears throat> after the boil, and it's actually 1045, so it's not too bad, but I think once this is all mixed in with the uh, dextrose and the light dry malt, the 50-50 mix, she'll bump it up a bit more. So we're just about to hit um, the lower end of the, there we go, the intake. So we can leave it there, I'll just turn the pump off. So without really sponging the rest of the uh, the word out of the um, the kettle, we're sitting at that um, 25 liter mark, and then I'll punch the numbers in to um, Beersmith and just see what sort of um, efficiencies I got.
is now, and that's heaps. That's absolutely bucket load. So what I might do is I'll leave it. Let's aerate some wood. This is my steel aeration stone. I, I have sanitized it. It's it's fine. Um, but I drop that in there. Okay. Yes, I'm going to touch the outside for all of you plantation freaks. I've got my nice little air filter on the end of that. There, like that. And here, I've got my um, little air pump, uh, aquarium air pump. So I'm just going to plug that in and give that a bit of an air rate. I, I enjoy my um, I enjoy my beer that I'm having. Um, I'll show you. Okay, so you can see what's going on there. Um, so I'll just let that go for a bit. Um, make sure there's a bit of a um, oxygen in there and. Make sure that the uh, good old uh, foam doesn't foam out the outside of it. But once I've done that, I'll do a final gravity reading. Then I'll add the yeast. I ended up getting uh, a final gravity of 1.057. So it's pretty close to where I want it to be. Okay, so I've just dragged the fermenter over here. There's the yeast I prepped last night. So I'm just gonna chuck it in the bottom Lastly, I've got to dry hop this. I'm probably going to bump up the dry hop now because I've ended up with a, a lot more wort um, than I expected. Again, I think I've put too much water in. The calculations are hopefully in correctly into this So, anyway, yeah, it's still going to be a nice beer, so I'm not going to stress about it. Right, now, talking about this before. So what I've got, so I've just got a, another spare magnet under here. And that's just to lock off the um, stir bar, which I've got now. So that when I pour that in, the stir bar is going to stay where the magnet is. Right, so I'm going to take the bung out. Oh. Right. That creamy goodness. Only goodness is going to go into the word. Right, here goes. There's a stir bar there. Okay, let's finish with. And that, my friends, is the beer day and the brew day. Okay, so that's it. It's in the fridge. It's in the fermenter, I should say. Um, it's a big brew day. Um, what time did we start? Um, it was midday. So it's been a good six hours. Yes, I've phone out about. Um, uh, and brewed for, a, oh sorry, boiled for an extra half an hour. And now I've got to clean up. The final gravity reading with the additions um, for the dextrose and the light dry malt um, ended up bumping it up to around about 6.1 um, ABV. Um, so it was the last reading I took out was 1.057. So in between there, so let's say half. Yeah, so big day, give it a couple of weeks and uh, I'll force carve it and stick it in the um, fermenting, uh, into the uh, kegerator. And uh, yeah, I'll do a tasting if you want. Anyway, I'm enjoying uh, Benny's um, Sunsets West Coast uh, from Fox Friday. He's, um, he's a great brewer. Get into him, we'll get onto him. He'll like that too. Um, and uh, yeah, see how you go. Um, see what you think. But uh, he's got a good collection there. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Have a good day. 
Um, it's been an epic weekend. See ya.